Hi everyone, welcome to Johnny How To. Today we're going to talk about what you need to do to set up your home system in order to use ray tracing inside of Unreal Engine 4.22 and above. Now, if you happen to have a 10 series graphics card, you're in luck because Nvidia has released newer drivers that enable that functionality for the previous generation cards as well. I, when I was going through the process, ran into some issues, so I'm going to try and detail those here in order to save you from the same troubles. Now your build of Windows 10 needs to be 1809 or above in order for ray tracing to work. And if your system is anything like mine and you get prompted to install Windows updates every day or two, it seems like, you'd think you'd be set to go. For me, that actually wasn't the case. And I needed to press Windows key R and type Winver for Windows version. And that actually tells you the build you were on. If it's not 1809 or above, you need to actually use Windows Update Assistant to force it to update. Now, if you just Google Windows Update Assistant, it's easy enough to find. You'll go to the Microsoft site, download the executable, install it, and then the process itself might take a while, but once it's completed, you should be at the newest version of Windows at the time of your download. The next step after Windows itself would be to update your NVIDIA graphics driver. So if you go to nvidia.com slash drivers, you can download it manually, or if you're using GeForce Experience, you can go ahead and click on the Drivers tab and have it automatically install the newest driver for you. In Unreal Engine itself, remember the ray tracing support is only on 4.22 and above, so you'll want to go to the Epic Games Launcher and then download the actual build of the engine itself, which if you don't already have is going to take a good while, so be patient with that download and installing. When you're actually launching Unreal, you need to do it in DirectX 12 mode, and the easiest way to do that, which is outlined in other articles, is to go ahead and right click on the shortcut, go to properties, and add the dash DX12 flag to the end, and once you launch it from the shortcut there on out, it should start in DirectX 12 mode. An odd issue that I was having that doesn't seem to be very common, but I wanted to talk about nonetheless, is whenever I launch Unreal only in DirectX 12 mode, any descriptions or icons I hover over would magnify to the entire screen, making the engine pretty much almost unusable. Now, what I ended up figuring out was that this is because I have an SLI setup and I had SLI enabled in the NVIDIA control panel. So if you are running an SLI setup and are encountering some bugs that don't seem to be very common, go ahead and disable SLI in the NVIDIA control panel and see if that fixes your issues. So to have ray tracing working in your Unreal projects, there's a couple of things you need to do. First off, and it's not going to work right away, we need to add a post-process volume to the level itself. That's where the ray tracing settings are going to show up eventually once we turn on for the project in the details panel. In the project settings itself, we're going to go ahead and search for just ray, and that would take us near the bottom. We see ray tracing. Once we check this, it's going to ask us, do you want to turn on for the project and also support compute skin cache, which is needed as well. Once we go ahead and do that, it's going to say, okay, we need to go ahead and restart in order for that to take effect. All right, so once you're back in Unreal, go and select your post-process volume you created or drag a new one in and go to the details panel and go and search for ray and all of your ray tracing options should display here. The only thing I can think of is remember that the post-process volume itself is the area that these effects are going to actually exist inside of. So you might want to, in your post-process volume, go ahead and either make it unbound so it's going to affect the entire level or size it appropriately to fit your needs. So this is the project without ray tracing on it. You see the reflection doesn't hardly work at all, breaks down pretty quickly, and the reflections look pretty good on the Chrome itself, maybe not quite as accurate. And here I'm turning on global illumination with ray tracing and then upping these steps for the reflections. And you'll see that on my 1080, the performance suffers greatly. So unless you have an RTX card, really creating content and, and previewing it in the editor is probably not very realistic, but say I'm using the Sequencer to create a rendered version of a scene I created in Unreal, then I can just flip on those settings before I render and have that quality. So probably if you're like me, you're thinking, yeah, that was a lot of steps to get ray tracing running in Unreal. And it was, but remember that a lot of these things in the future you're not going to have to concern yourself with. The build for Windows, the GeForce drivers, downloading the correct version of Unreal. Going forward, those are just going to be standard things. When you look at ray tracing itself, the performance hit on my 10 series card was huge and wouldn't really be usable in the editor, but at the same time, I appreciate being able to see where the technology is going. And of course, if you have an RTX card, that's a different story. You have real-time feedback in the editor, but I'm sure in no time at all, AMDs could have offerings. And as generations go along, ray tracing really is going to be an option that all of us are going to be able to enjoy, both in games and in our content creation. And with that, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you on the next Johnny How-To.